Hey guys, this is Tom from the Steam team at Valve. Uh, this tutorial video is going to show you how to set and update prices in Steam. Uh, this is useful for brand new partners, but if you have been pricing on Steam for a while, you can still follow these tools to update your prices on existing packages. We recently added support for a bunch of new currencies on Steam, so it's really important that you submit updated pricing uh, because if your package is missing a price in a currency, it becomes unavailable to a customer in that region. For example, if you don't submit a price for Hong Kong dollars, any customer in Hong Kong will now be unable to purchase your product. So be sure to follow up and approve new prices. So there are three different ways to submit prices, and I'm going to start with the simplest one here and then kind of move up to a couple that are more complicated. A few of our tools suggest prices in different currencies, and those suggested prices are not necessarily a direct currency exchange rate. Uh, they're based on a variety of factors and our own experience selling games in different regions of the world with different economic factors. The Steam suggested equivalent prices are only suggestions. Ultimately, you set the price of your game on Steam, and you can edit some or all of those currency prices as needed. You're just going to start by going to the Steamworks homepage, partner.steamgames.com. And you're going to need to log in with an account that has managed pricing and discount permissions to be able to set a price. So once you're logged on to the homepage, you see your list of apps. And you can click on any one of them to be taken to the app landing page. So that takes me to the app landing page for Ultra Fun Game. And right at the top, I have store packages, pricing, and release dates. This is a brand new package, so there's no pricing entered yet. I'm going to click on the package name right here, and that's going to take me through to the package landing page. Um, and I can see the apps that are included in this package, and I can suggest pricing. So I'm going to click on that Suggest Pricing button, and it's going to take me to this screen. There's a little bit of extra information and links to the documentation if you need it, but the main part of the page is your prices in every currency. Uh, you can see this is a brand new package, so the current price is all blank. Um, and here in this column is my proposed price. So I'm going to click this blue button at the top and select a USD price um, that's appropriate for the game. For my game, it's going to be $11.99. And when I select that price from the matrix, automatically all the prices in the other currencies autofill with our suggested pricing. Now, in a lot of cases, this suggested pricing is not just a direct currency exchange rate. It's the price that we think is appropriate for customers in that currency and in that region. Um, and if you need to edit any of these prices uh, based on our suggestions, you don't have to follow our suggestions. So if you need to change your price in Great Britain pounds to be $7.99 instead of $8.99, you can literally just edit it just like that. Every one of these fields is editable. If you need to change... Um, a base anchor USD price, you can change that and it'll automatically update all the suggestions in every currency. Um, once you've selected an anchor price, you've reviewed all your prices in other currencies, you can head down to the bottom here and click Save Pricing. That will push your prices for processing and publishing by Valve. If you have a lot of packages in your catalog or you need to submit a lot of prices at once, uh, you're able to do that by the second method. So I'm going to go to the Apps and Packages drop-down at the top of my page, and this is visible from any Steamworks page, and go down to Pricing. When I click that link, it's going to take me to the Bulk Pricing page. And that lists every one of my Steam packages and their prices in every currency. Uh, and just like the last page, we provide some documentation and advice at the top. So you can totally review that in addition to this video. This also gives you uh, a rundown of your prices in every single package. So this one, Ultra Fun Game, this is the price I just submitted. So it's kind of in this blue uh, font. These packages, they've never been priced before, so they're just all blank, they're all zeros. And then these other packages have prices already. I can change any one of them uh, at any time, and it looks a lot like the last tool. So if I need to update this package, the little currency icon, I can click on that, and it pops the same pricing matrix that I saw on the last page. 
So just like the last page, I can choose the base USD price point that makes sense for my game. And it'll automatically fill it with uh, recommendations, which just like the last page, you can edit. So if I need to change my Japanese yen price here um, to make it more in line with the price I'm selling the game at retail, for example, I can make that edit. And once you make an edit, we're going to use this key of information to sort of let you identify, hey, this, this price has now been edited from the base recommendation, which is fine. It just helps you kind of keep track of things. So if you want, you can then submit just that one price using the submit arrow right here, which will clear the package out from the listing and submit it. Now that price is submitted and I can submit all the other ones. You can also use this submit all changed prices button at the bottom. So if I need to set prices for a lot of packages at once and maybe revise pricing for an older package, I can submit all of those changed prices at once and all three of them will clear out for me. Uh, so again, this is just a method that allows you to see all of your packages at once. You can scroll over and see every single currency and edit each one as needed and then submit. We do have one more method of updating prices, um, but it's a little bit more complicated. It's probably ideal for partners who have a very large catalog with lots and lots of packages uh, or any partners who need to pass around um, a, a spreadsheet of the prices to get review and uh, external approval before they submit. Um, a couple caveats. One issue is that the this last tool that I'm going to show does not include uh, Steam's suggested pricing. Uh, and the other caveat is that it's a little bit, um, there are a few little risky hangups uh, that we're going to show you how to navigate. So the way to get there is actually just directly through a URL. We don't have a button for this tool yet. And the URL is uh, partner.steamgames.com slash pub slash import CSV. Import CSV. And that's going to take you to this page. So this tool requires a specifically formatted CSV, which you can get from the link right here. Uh, please be careful not to alter the headers in this spreadsheet. Don't change the row or column titles because that can negatively affect uh, the import. So go ahead and click the link here, and that'll automatically download a CSV for you. And when you open that CSV, it's going to have every one of your packages, the package name, and the price set in every currency. So this looks a lot like the bulk pricing tool, but it's in this useful Excel view. Um, and from this view, you can edit any prices that you need to do. So if I need to edit all of my Japanese yen prices, um, I can make changes as needed in each box uh, and change any of the currencies or prices that I need. Uh, there's a couple of things to think about here. One of the biggest ones is any currencies that don't price in partial units, like cents. And Japanese yen is actually an example of that. In Japanese yen on Steam, we don't price in partial units at all. So there's no concept of being, for example, $699.99. Um, you either need to be $699 or you need to be $700. And if you include a decimal point in uh, any of those prices that don't price in partial units, we'll actually just delete the decimal point. The tool will automatically delete the decimal point. So instead of being 699.99, you'd be 69,999 yen. The decimal point will just get erased, but the rest of the numbers will stay. So you need to be really careful on any of those currencies. Uh, and those are Russian ruble, Indonesian rupiah, Japanese yen, Korean won, Colombian peso, and Chilean peso. Um, so just be sure of that. If you have any blanks, um, that will not submit a price, so be sure not to leave any blanks in the spreadsheet. And when you've edited all the prices you need to edit, you can just go in and save it. Uh, be sure that you save it as a CSV, not as a .xls or any other Excel um, format. Just save it as a CSV. I'm going to save mine right to the desktop so I can find it. And then I'm going to go right back into the tool and choose that same CSV and upload it. So I'm going to navigate back to the desktop and choose the CSV I was just working in and upload it. 
and immediately it pulls through all of my prices. All these ones in green are the ones that were already updated, and these ones that are outlined in red uh, are ones that I just changed. So you can see for each one of these price points by hovering over, you can see what our suggested price is at that point. Um, but you can't choose from the matrix of suggested prices. You also can't edit on this page at all. So if you notice, oh, I made an error in Philippine pesos that I need to fix, you're going to need to go back into the CSV and make the change on the price that you need to change, save it, and go back to the tool and re-upload it. So that allows you to have all of your prices in this CSV that you can show uh, share with other folks at your organization if need be or, or send around for approval. Um, and then upload all those CSVs, uh, all that CSV all at once. So I'm going to click Submit Prices, and it's going to ask me if I'm sure, and then submit them for me, and I'm all set. So that's how you can uh, upload new prices and update existing prices in Steamworks. If you have any other questions or problems that you can't find the answer to, uh, you can check out our developer forums and ask uh, other developers and Valve employees directly. Um, and you can also review our documentation for any other information. Thanks, guys.